Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to a complex situation. A, a situation where we are in some serious danger, I would say. Uh, we have a lot of Craver ships running all over our everything all of a sudden. And I think this is really going to negatively impact the speed of victory. I mean, we were going to have to take them on eventually anyway, but I wanted to do it once all of my ships were done with this nonsense and refocused back over on this side of the Empire. So I think we're going to, uh, we're going to find ourselves hard-pressed to make any forward progress on the Craver front for a little while. I think we can hold them back, but that's probably about where it's going to end. So Gemini is being actively invaded, but it does have tractable armaments, it has reasonable population for drafting, and it has reinforcements coming. Are we going to just... Sail right through here. We have 14 command points worth of ships against their 12. They're all torn up, but they're also bringing in reinforcements very rapidly. The thing is, like we have to get over there, right? We have to do something. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna plan to head right through. The economic behemoth can stick around. Uh, what about over here? We need to get to Imnos. It'd be really cool if this fleet was faster. You know, we can merge in the uh, these two, right? We can do this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm having a really uh, heck of a time getting my throat clear today. I have a uh, <coughs> have an esophageal condition that sometimes uh, sometimes makes things that way. I guess now you should get over here in three turns, so we can go ahead and tell the economic behemoth to start moving as well. They'll arrive at about the same time. Okay, uh, I'm not that worried about the uh, the random blue ships running around here. I don't think we're in a lot of danger from them. We need to take Imnos, and then we need to send somebody down to Genomos to finish the job. Or I can even just let the Vaulters do that, although it <clears throat> sure kind of looks like they're not doing it, doesn't it? Okay, and then in terms of stuff up here. Well, first of all, we need to produce more ships on this edge. So, Heracles has a reasonable industry output now. I think I'm going to move all the population that's on 2 over to Gemini 1. In fact, do I want to... I'm going to fill Gemini 1 completely. Ratio will be more effective over here anyway. Right, and we don't... yeah, we don't care what kind of planet we're on. And then we're going to build ourselves some ships. Four turns each, huh? Well, get working. I'm a little concerned about dealing with the Annihilator here. I really wish we had our Juggernaut over on this side of the Empire. Then, we need to pick up some new technology. So, we don't currently have mining of uh, the highest level resources, and we may actually need them. We have sources of them, right? Uh, we have, yeah, we have Orichalcyx here. Quite a bit of Orichalcyx available, actually. Quadranix available on Gano. Yeah, like we need to get we need to get mining facilities up, I think. So let's focus on that next. Right, Cal6 refining is uh that sorry. Crust engineering is an okay technology. Gamma absorption has the microwave pipes on it, which I think are a pretty good structure to build on uh, your well-developed systems. I think we'll go this way first, then we'll grab crust engineering. It's nice to have enough science that we're actually able to get. Uh, get stuff done reasonably quickly now. And we need to uh, take a quick look here. Where are we at on industry? Zubin is actually one of our highest industry systems. I'm wondering if we need to be producing ships on Acellus. We probably do. Actually, hold on. Before we... I say before. Let's reconsider the queuing up of these kites. Let's go back and look at what our actual weapons tech looks like, because we probably need new weapons tech. Uh, we have 117 antimatter, and we're mining it at a rate of 10 per turn. So we do have access to uh, some pretty good shielding. 4% evasion and better shield capacity and energy defense than our uh, non-strategic shielding. Like, what if we did that? And then, uh, do we actually have better weapons? 42 DPS, 37, 30... We don't really. 
we could try to make a changeover into uh, like a boarding pod strategy. We do have access to advanced boarding pods. We can just steal a bunch of these Craver ships and then use them against the Cravers. Maybe. Uh, we also could go to basic entropy torpedoes. Hold on. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at the Craver weapon systems. So we're seeing bullets. Lasers, lasers, bullets, it's kinda kinda scattershot. But a lot of uh, a lot of bullet weapons. Which is not great for trying either missile or boarding pod based strategies. Looks like their newer stuff is mostly over to energy weapons. Yeah, they're mostly running energy weapons. So we could try a boarding pod thing. And buffing our energy defenses like this is going to be really valuable. Uh, and then... We don't have access to new or better engines. We don't have access to... Uh, anything else, really. I guess let's stick with this for now. Weapon system-wise. And then let's uh, cancel these two kites. Put these two in the queue. Uh, Gemini's kite also needs to be one of these fancy new ones. Didn't really change the cost much, fortunately. And this is worth doing. We have a lot of things that care about the level of our ships, so we should finish the quantum damp circuits. And then we need to produce some more kites. Turns out that's the thing I care about most, is just more kites. We also need more ship designs, like, we do have access to Kestrel. I'm wondering if we should rebuild our Kestrels to be uh, fleet accelerators and grant extra movement to the whole fleet. What is this? Extra damage per targeted command point. That's, yeah, it's probably not the thing we actually need. We probably just need to run some uh, some H-field accelerators. We either need to uh, body up some Kestrels with those, or we need to go and grab the... Uh, this thing. We need to grab the Climb-class vessels, which will have more slots, and then uh, just really, like, put one of these in each fleet and jam it full of those acceleration modules. It's actually not a bad plan. Yeah, maybe let's prioritize this tech, actually. It's only two turns. I like that quite a bit, actually. As a way of solving that problem. Alright. Man, I hope they actually finish Pixis off this time. Making me a little bit nervous with these numbers. They have so many ships, how do they not have more manpower devoted here? Okay, yeah. we're being attacked. We're going to uh, do our best to protect the system on Izar. Unfortunately, uh, running out of population over there. And here we will draft defenders. Oh, hey. Grave defeat on Gemini. Well, that's great. Uh, Casper refused another truce for us. That's good. Gemini has been temporarily captured. There's an outpost alert on Nalin. Yep, well, we'll deal with it. Uh, we probably don't need to stay here for the last round. I think Izar's probably got it under control. Ah, uh, man, it takes us too many turns to get everywhere. Okay, a quest started. While your navigators are wise enough to maintain distance from the terrific gravitational forces of the neutron star, it appears that another was not so lucky. You receive weak signals from an ancient buoy, indicating that a virtual endless is imprisoned in the powerful magnetic field of this astronomical anomaly. The buoy transmits with its distress signal a series of plans for massive platforms for scientific research. If you build enough of these on your planets, they will automatically coordinate to trigger a disruption in the neutron star's field and free the trapped virtual. While this sounds great, it appears that the virtual has also used your comm system and its knowledge of the galaxy to beam this same message to every other faction. So whoever builds three Gamma Analysis Platforms first will free a trapped Virtual Endless and will get that guy on their team. This dude is probably fine. 
I would like to do this if we can figure it out. Yeah, we've we've dropped enough bodies on this this battle that I think the problem's solved. I really don't care about Sofans right now. Uh, we discovered a free ship somewhere, a free ship that is irrelevant, unfortunately, due to being tiny and weak and not upgradable. Uh, yeah, pump one of these out. Like if we could, if we could just divert a couple of systems for a very short time and get ourselves a free hero out of it, I think that's the thing we probably ought to do. Oh, also grab that. Okay, so let's merge you in. This is a pretty good fleet now. Oh, I guess I could have repaired. Ah, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Yep, all of these kites are totally full on manpower. Yeah, cool. So we're bringing 900 manpower and a siege weapon. This should be fast. Here we have that prowler that we found. I don't really know what to do with this thing. Uh, here we can attack their damaged scouting ship, I assume. Actually, let me look at the stats. 229, 118 with 840 health remaining. Actually, we'll probably get killed if we try that. Well, we probably have to go. Like, we, yeah, we probably have to go to Nolan. Alright, I need this to get disrupted. As annoying as that is. A big part of the problem here is we just share too much border space with them. Intensive cultivation logistics will help us rebuild after the siege. It's probably the way we, we need to go there. Uh, over here on Yersh, we can search a thing. Alright, found a couple of resource deposits, and as such, a couple of points of resources. Uh, we are definitely attacking this Riftborn ship. Get out of here, you are not allowed to settle here. And I assume we actually destroyed it? Yeah, because there was nowhere for it to retreat to. Okay, so we have you and... This kite, which probably needs to go this way. I think we've got the uh, the Riftborn side of the battle under control. You, I don't even know what to do with you. You don't have any movement points anyway. I'm being told that you need orders, but that it turns out to be a lie. Okay, so we have to figure out what we're going to do. Like, we need some actual strategy here. It looks like, okay, Pixis is going to fall. They've managed to bring in reinforcements. As soon as Pixis does fall, we're going to issue a call-out to our allies uh, to attack, like, Essa. Hopefully the Rift War, or the, uh, the Unfallen, will be able to put some pressure on this front, which will cause the uh, Cravers to have to redirect some forces away from Hidel and Gemini so that we can reclaim them. Which we can do easily enough with this fleet after it pushes these dudes off of Nolan. Oh yeah, right. I actually looked up too. I spent all, I spent a bunch of money on stuff, and then I looked up. I was like, okay, I gotta remember to sell some stuff before the end of the turn. I'll sell that and that. We certainly don't need that amianthoid. They really need to fix this. Uh, ships that have zero movement points left should not be in your. Ships that need orders queue. I'm gonna hide the request pings again here. Let's have these guys move to here and then stop. We can pick up this new kite. Uh, it's relatively cheap to retrofit all those ships. And we're bringing 17 command points worth of stuff. We should be able to beat them. Ah, notice that they just now picked up a new command point tech and now have a huge number of command points available. We should be able to beat these guys pretty handily. 
We discovered a hundred signs in the, the encounter remains there. That's an entire hundred. Okay, so we're going to have three turns until we've got this quest done. Yeah, that's the slowest one. That's not bad. And that uh, that building does remain available to build even after you uh, complete the quest. So it doesn't. we don't need to build it in the most effective places immediately. Uh, interestingly, we don't seem to be sieging. Oh, because there's a... There was a civilian fleet that was preventing me from going into siege mode. I had assumed that civilian fleets did not do that, because how, how and why? How and why would they do that? Okay. This is almost done. Next turn, Pixis should be purple. Or, actually, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. I don't, how do the Unfallen work again? I don't usually conquer stuff that much as the Unfallen. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. Okay, we have access to Climb Class ships. So, let's have a quick look at that design. The Falcon. Pull all of modules. So, we need... The ship needs its own basic engines. And then, pretty much as many of these as we can jam in there. Now keep in mind, we have a uh, uh, times two multiplier on these modules because it is a uh, it is a medium class ship. So I think that works on these. I'm not 100% certain. Traditionally, when I have done this thing, I've done it with, uh, with smalls. But people in the comments of the last episode recommended that, that uh, this might be the way to go. On this particular plan, and I think I think it sounds like the it sounds like a good idea to me. So if we just do something like this, we'll be providing six extra movement to the fleet it's in, and then it has its own six base movement. So we will see some acceleration, and then we can add on some weapons and stuff. So we need I, we're going to put in either two fleet modules or two weapon modules, and then like the basic defense split. What do we want to do here? Probably what we want to do here actually is run this as a bullet ship. And the reason I want to do that is uh, to add a little bit more projectile offensive power to the fleets to help balance out the uh, energy weapon offensive power of the kites. We want the enemy to be devoting as much space as possible to armor plating, basically so that the kites are effective. Uh, we don't, by doing this, have room to put on siege modules, but I guess right now we're playing goalie more than anything else. We can refit stuff with siege modules when it looks like it's time to go on the offensive. It is worth noting we do have access to this root guard, or roost guard shield, which will give extra shield to every ship in the flotilla. I don't hate that, but I think we gotta, I think we gotta optimize for movement at the moment. Okay, so down here on Zubin, let's unqueue this kite and queue up a falcon. Uh, on a Celis. Let's put a falcon together, and we're actually going to move this to the top of the queue, because there's not really that much work that's been done on this kite. Uh, do I want to have a kite in two turns, and then a falcon in four, or a falcon in three, and then a kite in four? I guess let's finish the kite. The extra firepower is good, and that's actually uh, still quite close to the front, so. Oh, also, we're going to be in, like, actual combat around Acellus pretty soon. Did I build... I did not build tractable armaments here yet. Let's, uh, let's throw that in there, because they're coming. <laughs> Clearly, they are interested in a battle. Uh, I'm going to move the economic behemoth down to... Hadar, just to get it away from that fleet, and then we can uh, we can figure out a plan with that later. But it needs to not get murdered first. Okay. <clears throat> so we don't have to make any big combat decisions about this this turn. I think there's there's a pretty good chance that we're going to pop Order of the Red Blade on this fleet as it arrives around Gemini. And you over here on Yersh. I don't know. Stay put for a turn. I'm just going to hide that ship. Okay. 
I'm a little worried about what this large ship is going to do to a Celis, but for the most part, I think we're in pretty good shape here. This economic behemoth needs to go to Nalan. Trust me, it'll be clear by the time you get there. Everything's going to be fine. Lock these dudes in place. Uh, we'll do a protect system here. Hopefully this will be enough to kill them. Ah, next turn. Whoa, okay, a lot of stuff just happened. So Senya Snow Ridge has gained some points. We need to increase fleet effectiveness. I guess manpower fill rate is fine. Okay, this we don't need. That's a battle that's about to start. Uh, we went to war with Horatio. That's not awesome. Uh, my alliance is close to achieving victory supremacy, are we? A couple of times, apparently. We've gained control over the constellation Commandress. Where is that? Is that over here? Okay. It's owned by the Cabal of the Black Nebula. Which color is Horatio again? Oh, I see. Also, the United Empire was invited into the Alliance, without my knowledge. Well, I mean, okay. I guess I'm fine with it. Where does that put us exactly on the Conquest victory? 43 of 103. But we are at 5 of 9 on Supremacy. Honestly, maybe this turns into a real Supremacy victory. Because <laughs> what? We're going to take... It's not that hard to get a hold of Way. Which is one of the original home systems. We can take Craver Prime over on Ingress, and that'd be seven right there. Oh, hey, that's bad. That's headed for Acellus, it looks like. Um. I wonder how much time we have. Here's the thing. Uh, also, in the comments of the last episode, people told me that the Citadel is how you defend against that stuff. Uh, let's see. It also provides a native defense against obliterator projectiles, which can be further reinforced by the obliterator shield to be fully protected against any attack. So, if we can get this guy to turn around, it's actually not that expensive to turn uh, to turn a, an economic behemoth into a citadel, and we already have the tech. I'm a little worried that this won't happen in time. Uh, we've explored 80% of the galaxy now that we have the United Empire's maps. So I wonder if, did we declare war on Horatio and then invite these guys in? Or did we invite these guys in and they were at war with Horatio and so now we're at war with Horatio? I don't know. Uh, the Empire is not going to be providing any assistance to me, I have to assume. The battle at Nalin should be pretty easy for us. We have this stuff to worry about. Okay, Bonnie finished that economic behemoth. So Bonnie has 415 industry and can produce for us a falcon. We do need another, like, another military behemoth would not be a bad thing. What's my behemoth cap right now? Is it one more? Yeah. Well, get me a falcon. The falcon will get into reinforcement position quickly. You would produce the military behemoth a little bit faster. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe it's military behemoth time. Yeah, let's do it. I would love to have another Juggernaut available. Much, much better when we have more. They're trying to produce ships on Imnos to provide backup to their other stuff, which should be pretty easy for us to deal with. Uh, let me fix this, though. We don't really need other ships in the middle. I think the Juggernaut can hold that one down by itself, probably. We don't need to watch this. There is no escape. They will be absolutely obliterated. So we are at 100k now. Uh, we should spend some, like, on this maybe. Or, am I allowed to just buy this? I guess we have to resolve this battle first, and I'd like to spend the KE before we resolve the battle. So yeah, let's turn Kima into, it's only 55. That's not so bad. Keeps us content. Uh, and then we need to make some stuff happen over here. Man, it's going to take a little while for this system to be ready to go. 
is a temperate but sterile planet. It's kind of the worst of all worlds. Well, we're losing money very rapidly. This is 20 extra... Oh, you know what we should do here is we should um, modernize. Because we can put a bunch of... That level 3 modernization will solve a lot of the problems. Okay, so we'll fix that up. In fact, I'm going to cancel these so that the game asks us for orders on this planet next turn. Or this system, because otherwise I'm going to forget. Uh, you are going to shoot a probe over at Genimos while I'm over here. Okay, let's resolve this battle. This should be a pretty easy win for us, I think. We are going to watch it, though. Uh, so Butcher 2, Reaper 3. This is an old, old fleet. The Reaper's tough, though. Okay, we've got some garbage scrapers. Should probably move this garbage uh, other ship to the middle as well. And yeah, we just go get lucky, right? Like, I like this plan. Our kites have considerable damage output and benefit a lot from the uh, damage bonus on crits. They chose not to run. Which I appreciate, because I need the key. Alright, let's let's uh, let's hope this goes our way without too many losses. I'm not worried about losing, but I am worried about uh, maintaining offensive. It's a thing we are, we're going to be in this war for the rest of the game, most likely, so... Looks like we've got a pretty good trade-off going over here. They only devoted one ship to the middle, so that was easy enough to clean up. This was actually the flotilla that I was uh, most worried about over here. Because of that, uh, that coordinator ship with all of the health. But it seems like we cut through it pretty quickly. So yeah, this is like a complete victory. Absolute and decisive. Uh, we created a debris field, of course. But more importantly, we got 6.7k. Really, really good. And also, that's a quite a bit of science. What's our Empire Science output right now? 4027. So yeah, that was a that was like a quarter turn of science output. Alright. Now we are starving out their outpost. And I'm gonna spend some dudes here to starve their outpost even faster. Because man oh man is like manpower is not an issue for us. We have all that we need. Yeah, let's hope that this thing travels slowly enough that we can get the Citadel up before it hits. Because if not, we're going to be in terrible shape. This is... I mean, we're learning something here, though. It's probably a good idea to get a Citadel set up around your, uh, your capital sometime around the time that you get access to Citadels, right? So that this exact thing can't happen. Because, man, losing your capital system is, like, terrible. That's a huge, huge hit. Uh, and over here, we have some pretty good stuff. How many, uh, how many of these upgrades are we going to be able to do? Just one right now. So we do want to save that for the new system. Uh, we are short... Oh, wow, we are short uh, titanium. Or hyperium, rather. That's a lot of hyperium. Goes into one of those falcons. Okay, uh, do something else for a couple of turns. Build one of these. That's not great for you. Build one of these. thing's kind of on the outskirts of the Empire, not really in a place where it uh, is providing a ton of value anyway. And I think we are just gonna wait this out? What's our... Are we have 900 manpower? We definitely need to bring them a little bit lower, at least, before we attack, because I have no way of getting reinforcements, and they can reinforce out of their population pool. Okay, we got a lot of ships working toward the Empire being in a better place. Uh, we're going to stay right here for now. Actually, never mind. Uh, of course we are. We're out of movement. But I was going to say, we're going to stay right here for now to make sure this starves out, and then we head to Hidel. Come on, please don't really move that far. I'm a little worried about it. It's worrying. Hmm, that does look like it's going to connect next turn, doesn't it? Not super great. I do think it's strange that they, like, 
they send an obliterator shot out at a system and then they move their ships over to that system. Hey, stop running. Stop with the running. Okay, we did manage to uh, kill off their colony and then they sent some... Wow, they sent a really injured fleet over here to fight with us, so we'll deal with that pretty quickly. Uh, here at Acellus. Oh, we're actually being invaded. This doesn't make any sense at all. Why would you send an invasion fleet? Okay. Uh, we were at war, now we're... No, 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 no. This is a bad time for a truce. Oh, well, okay, they took Pixis, though. Here's the thing. Um, Something absolutely not. Cosmos we have come to understand. You're not one of them. What do you want? Interesting. A war that I declared has extra gains for us. That's good to know. I hear what you guys are saying. I would love to, uh, I would love to have peace as well, but we can't, we can't not finish off the Rift War. Like, if we let them rebuild, we're gonna be very sorry we did that. Uh, over here, jeez, I don't know. Let's grab this before we do anything else. Um, yeah, so we are gonna lose our, our capital, it looks like. It is going to be obliterated. Well, we learned an important lesson here. Uh, also, it will be very dramatic when we win the war after losing our capital. But also, I'm still very sad about it. Do we have any irreplaceable buildings here? Uh, I mean, our Galactic HQ, but that's a lot less important than it uh, was in the early game. Yeah, we'll never get our Denark University back. That's... oh, the Intergalactic Technology Center's here as well. Man. That's screwed up. It is screwed up to fire an obliterator missile at the Intergalactic Technology Center. Well, we learned something. Okay, so let's fight them uh, over here. What do we expect from them? Short range. Short range. There's a lot of bullet ships. Okay, there's two, bu two big bullet ships and a big laser ship. Well, I see no reason not to uh, split the kites up a little bit more evenly. I think we'll go ahead and run a kite in the middle, even though that's not ideal for them, just so that we can um, so we can absorb damage in the middle a little bit more effectively. I don't know. Maybe it's a good idea to pull this guy off to the side and just fight the uh, fight the butcher that will be going center from far away. Because right, they're going to use get lucky as well. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's move you out to one of the sides. So we're going to lose this flotilla pretty quickly, but they're going to lose their stuff pretty quickly as well. I think we'll be okay. They committed both of their mediums. Yeah, like these ships are going to be very ineffective after they defeat those two. And we're going to clear out the side flotillas so quickly that we're going to have a, uh, an, a morale advantage anyway. I like it to be zoomed in just a little bit more because I like to see it having the actual individual health bars on the ship visible from the overview. The uh, the flotilla health bar overview is not nearly as effective, I think. Or not nearly as, as useful. Effective at conveying information. Okay, yeah, so like I said, we managed to burn out their side flotillas really, really easily. They got mismatched pretty badly there. And so now we have a considerable advantage over them in mid at the cost of a hawk, basically. We should probably have moved the Hawk out, too. I wanted to keep it where it was doing the most damage for its very short lifespan, but... We probably should have pulled it to the side and let just the hero be mid. Or, you know what, you have to have one command point mid, though, I think. Whatever, the important thing is, we are victorious. Yeah, that's gonna make contact. Man... Maybe it's not going to Acellus? Maybe it's headed to Kamos? Because, like, if you're going to invade Acellus, if you think you have Acellus, why would you blow it up? Also, I wonder what the effect on Arcae is going to be when our capital gets destroyed. <laughs> Alright, so here we should win handily. Only 2.7 uh, K for all of that, really? Hmm. I wonder if it's only based on how the last round went. Because we fought off a lot of dudes, 
Uh, and we were severely outnumbered during part of that. You need to... You need to die. Be gone, scavenger. Hey, look at that. Point eight. Okay, here, this should be really easy. They just don't, they don't have any health on any of their stuff at all. So, yeah, do it like this. We don't need to watch this. Uh, Alright, the full ten. I mean, I guess it was, it was pretty even command points, despite the fact that their fleet was terrible and had no chance of winning. This, uh, this system's a little bit gameable. Senya's gonna pick up. I don't know, a point of cosmic castaway, I guess. Alright, we're on to the good stuff now, though. Uh, we discovered even more Emianthoid. I feel like we have a lot of sources of that. Uh, you know, Kionos is not the, the heaviest on industry, but maybe we ought to build quantum damp circuits here because it's just so close to the front. Alright, we need to... We need to make some pushback happen here. Ah, they're bailing. Well, that's not great for me. So this fleet is in pretty great shape. They're coming back with a pair of Annihilators and two Butchers. We can't actually fight that, right? You come down here and pick up some more guys. But with five Kites... 47,000 health versus 14. Our own mediums only have 22. I don't... I don't know. I don't think we're going to be able to fight this. And we're not actually going to try to take Gemini anyway. Oh, man. Gemini has no... I forgot. This was ours until very recently. It has no garrison. Yeah, you know what? Let's take Gemini. Uh, engage in a little bit of blitzing. Just really let him have it. Get my system back. Okay, so Gemini's been captured. And then I think we... I think we are going to sit here and try to hold it. Go back to full health on all our ships. These Annihilators are scary. They do have a lot of fighters, though. So that's a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> that's a lot of command points... Or a lot of uh, modules, rather, wasted. Because their f fighters are terrible at actually destroying ships. They're mostly for uh, defense against bombers. Yeah, we're going to try it. We might be able to. This this is very unfortunate. Uh, I assume I'm not going to be able to pull this kite. Actually, we should probably cancel the Falcon then. If we're going to lose the system. We can at least get these resources back. Yeah, and I assume we're not going to be able to get the the kite out of there in time. Uh, so a bunch of stuff is happening in a bunch of places. Alright, Gemini needs orders. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, apparently they did away with my Xeno Industrial Infrastructure. Uh, probably either they destroyed it or I destroyed it during the repeated invasions. Alright, this sucks. I'm gonna like, mash this button and try to get the Citadel put up. We'll see if we can do it. I had to click really fast. Come on. Come on. Let me do a thing. Ah, all the pop-ups. I have everything set not to pop up. But apparently it doesn't matter. So, this is Affection's home system, but it was destroyed and no longer counts toward the supremacy victory. The number of home systems required has been reduced accordingly. Uh, you can use a behemoth to restore one of the planets, and the system will once again count. So actually, that's the case over here too. Then I guess that makes sense because if we were, uh, if those systems were still counting, we'd be looking at um, there are ten or eleven factions now. I don't know. Nine's not right though. Well, 
We lost our home system. Pretty devastating. Fairly devastating. Uh, the good news is, the platforms have been built, and apparently the hyperspace signal has been sent. At first, you do not notice anything, but you receive a word of thanks from the Academy, and something in the Empire's communication network is glowing. So we have, in fact, received a virtual endless hero. That's a big deal. Also, 5k, so we're almost uh, back up to the cap. Let's have a look at this dude. He is a virtual endless with... Wow. Uh, one and a half... Free move one and a half times free movement speed on fleet. Is he gonna be a good Let's see, he's a, he's a seeker, so I don't I don't love seekers. That said, enhanced navigation or enhanced na astro navigation combines well with his uh, fleet skill. Get even more movement on a fleet. And post relativistic targeting down here is still it's half as good as when it's up here. And then Endless Charisma seems like a pretty bad skill, actually. But Shield Penetration up, minus upkeep, plus Shield Capacity, Galactic Sense. Okay, I mean, this dude's a, this dude's a uh, ship captain, right? Turns out we're going to need a lot of them. Yep, so four extra movement on fleet, plus two extra movement on fleet. 40% uh, shield absorption. Uh, let's go for shield penetration on his fleet first. Uh, plus 80% damage on your own personal ship. Plus 10%... Oh, I'm out of skill points. Yeah, that's fine. This is a fine place to stop. Then we'll grab this next. Okay. Where are we going to put you to work? I guess we got to look at your ship first. Let's pull all these garbage modules. What do I want to do with you? Keep the same basic defensive split. We definitely need to install a normal engine. I probably don't need to give him a bunch of like extra engines or anything. He's going to be super fast as it is with all the skill points. Uh, then we need... Uh, what do we want to do here? We could go for a couple of kinetic enhancers and just load them up with bullet weapons. Adamantian Jammer doesn't seem terribly important. Definitely don't want to be carrying an antimatter lenser. You know what, let's just... Oh, only one enhancer can be equipped. Okay, well then we need one other thing. I guess it can just be a siege module. Not really anything else that we can equip there that's going to be all that meaningful, I think. Alright, well, he's ready-ish for action. Yeah, man, I really wish I had realized that they were shooting a missile at us, because we could we had this guy here. We could have just turned him into a citadel. Ah, uh, well. It's, I mean, we're, you know, we're screwing up and doing badly in ways that we don't generally, and I think that's going to make the game a little bit more exciting overall. Uh, we should be able to take down Hidel's tiny little garrison, like, right now, right? Just go Blitz, really let him have it. Yep, it turns out this is mine. It has always been mine. Scarred Combat Zone was the stage of the most devastating campaign that took place during the invasion of Leaper by SB. Hold on, that's early. That's an early call yet. The battle claimed the lives of many soldiers. This, by the way, like... I know that this is not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but the way their string builder creates these terrible comma splices and stuff is driving me crazy. Amplitude, if you want somebody to fix this, you have my number. Give me a call. I can do it. I can, I can, I can handle this. Alright, so this is mine, as it always has been. Uh, let's get some basic stuff built here. Uh, they actually already boosted it to level 3 with their level 3 boost, which is pretty good. Wait, did I boost this to level 3? This is my boost. I mean, no, because this is not my level 2. So actually, their, uh, their boosts are really effective. I'm pleased that they showed up and did that. Alright, we have some other stuff going on. Show me this. 
It's like random pirates are attacking us at Yersh. And this is battle. Yeah, that's that. Okay, we'll deal with that in a second. So we got 3.2 KE from that. Uh, yep. It's a bunch of stuff. Devastated. A Celis sure was targeted by an obliterator. A Celis' star was not destroyed. It's there. It's perfectly fine. We can re inhabit it later. Uh, Kogawa Bright Blade. Boy, what are you taking? How about that? How about plus six movement on your fleet? Man, as soon as I felt like I wanted more fleet movement, all of a sudden it's everywhere. He just seemed very good. Hadar is not. It's not far from the front. We should probably build some more ships here. We need kites and falcons and whatnot. Uh, we finished Gamma Absorption, so we're now bringing in the Quadranix. Yeah, alright. We're making all kinds of progress. I guess what we want to do with this guy depends a lot on how things go at Gemini. Who else still needs orders? You guys still need orders. Uh, no, you don't. You have no movement. You, Garbage Prowler, need to... I don't know. Head over in this direction. Uh, Dabrinia could probably stop with the Ancestral Reverence, although there's going to have to be a lot of reverence at this point. Our resources are transferred to the home system. This might not do anything anymore, honestly. Because I don't... have. We have probably got a new home system, right? Does it say what my home system is anywhere? Is there a marker on this list? There isn't, right? We can see what other Empire's home systems are because they have the... Uh, the marker on them, but we don't get that notification about our own home system, right? It's just that generally you know it because it's the place where you started. Yeah, I don't know what our home system is now. Well, I guess let's not worry about it. Okay, over here is Izar. We have begun to rebuild the population. Get ourselves some, some of that. Okay, so we gotta take this obliterator seriously. This is a real problem. We have to find it and we have to destroy it, and it has to happen, like, pretty soon. I think here we're just gonna lose the Peregrine. Like, I'm not gonna retreat and lose 10k. You, die nobly for our ideals. In a terrible way that is obviously a huge waste of resources and actually is super upsetting to have to do. Uh, here we have, let's see, this is a medium planet, this is a large... This is a fair amount of extra science, but probably we just need to be able to build a lot of ships. It turns out we're going to need a really huge number of ships. Okay. Uh, the Lumeris are going to win a competitive quest that we apparently are working on. It turns out my people love war. Who could have guessed? All of our construction is complete, and so it is time for this battle, which is very important. Although, if we lose it, as long as we deal some reasonable damage, we're still going to be in an okay position uh, because we have another fleet that can come in as reinforcement. So we probably want to run all of the kites at their optimal ranges. Uh, we have to have one command point here. That's what the Kestrel's for, I guess. Yeah, this is bad, though. We're going to be in danger. Okay, one of the Annihilators has no energy defense. The other one has considerable energy defense, so I guess we'll see how this works out. We all have those new energy defense modules in place, so... Hopefully we won't get mulched by their lasers too quickly. Okay, they split off to the sides as well. I guess I should have known. I don't think that makes this wrong. I do think that uh, this is bad, though. I think we're in a lot of danger. Like, a lot of danger. Alright, so... And we have enough damage to actually, like, do considerable work here. This is the Annihilator 8, so this is the one that doesn't have energy defenses. Actually, it's looking like we're gonna blow this one up really quickly. Long before either of our ships is close to death. And then that Butcher is lost as well. And then this flotilla has a really good firing arc on the rest of them. 
Yeah, this is actually, uh, this is going alright. Oh, wow. That, uh... Maybe that was the one? No, oh, no, this, this is the one that had the energy defenses, but it was also up against an extra kite. They just don't have the, uh, they don't have the defensive technology to stand up to us, I don't think. You know, typical Craver stuff. All offense, no defense. Well, the good news is we have really thrashed them over the last few turns. Like, they've lost a ton of military strength. They moved a couple of Reapers in to mess with us, which we will, uh, solve here. And, yeah, I think we're pretty much just doing this thing. Let's, um... Yeah. Something has to go in the middle. I guess we could try to keep the Kestrel alive, but also I don't really care about it. So we could, like, move one of the kites to the middle. Because they have to play something in the middle anyway. Yeah, let's do that. And then, of course, the hero will be fine. Yep, full retreat. Absolute cowardice. Oh, and we hit 100k, so... I should have... I should have buffed this fleet. I keep forgetting about the fact that there are abilities over here. Uh, the cognitive load of learning to play a new faction is high sometimes. It takes me a little while. Okay, so we're probably going to send this fleet up to Gemini. You are also headed to Gemini. We gotta, we gotta get some work done. Over here, we're <laughs> going to get back to work on our faction quest. Remember that? So they're bringing in a pupa for some reason. I think they think they can get to Nalan, probably. Obviously, that's not exactly going to work for them. Uh, yeah, but we've suffered some unbelievable losses. Really brutal stuff. And I guess this ship is coming along with us, the seed ship. Alright. So we're going to avenge Ocellus. Oh yeah, you need a fleet. Uh, this, this guy has a commander, that guy has a commander. We are going to... Let me think here. We're going to need a commander for all of these Falcon fleets that are being produced. Like, maybe that guy just chills for a turn. And then we'll attach him to this Falcon over here. And have him, uh, have him come and help catch up over there. Or this one. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna leave that guy unequipped for one turn. So what do we wanna do with all this K? Do we wanna just turn Nolan into a real uh a real boy? Probably, right? Oof, sixty five is rough. Discovered a source of benthic gems, which is, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you are a governor, so you definitely want this. Zubin is going to be even better at producing ships, which is good, because it's actually going to need to produce another whole fleet that we can use to pressure from this side. So you're pretty fast, but you could be a little bit faster. I'm going to throw, eh, you know what? You'll be fine. Just get over here. I'm going to throw him on the one from Bonnie. Alright. Let us accelerate. It will in fact take two turns to get from Bonnie to Gemini. <laughs> That's pretty alright. That's pretty good. Uh, these guys are headed to Kionos, which is a problem for me. Not a big problem. Kionos can hold its own for a little while. Um, but I'm going to move this economic behemoth to Gemini, and maybe we should set up... Uh, maybe we should set up a citadel here. Maybe we should set up a citadel at Hadar. Oh, Zubin! We need one at Zubin. If we lost Zubin, that would actually be really, really bad for us. Uh, okay, what's up? The system Yersh has recently become a flashpoint in the galaxy-wide struggle for dominance. Due to its unique history, position, and resource distribution, it's caught the eye of multiple other empires some of whom are reportedly eyeing it as a potential new base. Now is your chance to beat them to it and deny them a valuable strategic foothold. Well, I do love 5k. Where is this? Yersh. Oh yeah, Yersh, right. Uh, that's not happening. Sorry. Just can't, we just can't do that. Uh, so now that we have all these extra resources, let's build some stuff. 
construction times are a little bit more reasonable. Uh, this is the turn we attack Imnos. Wait, spend, then do stuff. Yeah, let's just convert Nolan. Because we're about to we're about to win a ground battle and stuff. Like we gotta we gotta get to this. We got places to go. You're kidding me. One tank survived. Alright, well we'll get the uh We'll get the K next turn, I guess. So we hit the hit a population bonus for the Epistus. Is that ten or twenty? Okay, ten. Unfortunately, all of the ten point population bonuses are nothing. We're getting close to twenty Tikanin. What do we get there? Even more defense filling. Like, ugh. What a bad thing. What a what a bad useless trait. Alright, here we'll attack. These guys will run away. So yeah, this this thing needs to put down the probe. I want to run it over and turn it into a citadel around Zubin right after that, but I'm worried that turning it into a citadel will delete the probe. I guess we'll put down the probe and then we'll run it to Zubin, and if I see an obliterator shot coming in, we can just citadel up real fast. I don't know what we're going to do with this one. Uh, oh, hey, Placidus. Right, this is a place. Uh, I don't know, man. I guess it's a hot gas world, so AI labor isn't nothing. Okay, Zubin, where we produce the Falcon, is going to have to start producing some other stuff. I'm going to make microwave pipes here real fast, because this is actually very powerful in this location. Uh, and then I think we're probably going to re refigure all these. Edenization is probably not actually relevant anymore, right? Uh, I'd love to go to Fealty Foundation. We don't really have a good option. Some of these, though. I guess the population of these planets, like, this is another 9. This is another 16 industry if I convert both of these to industrial zones. It's not really even noticeable. Yeah, maybe we leave it on Edenization just because it's not worth the time to switch it over? Okay, here we may as well modernize a little bit. Gemini is also on the microwave pipes plan. No, it's not. Stupid expensive pipes. Alright, make me a kite, I suppose. Oh, you, hold on. You gotta be on industrial zones. We need, we need more production power up here. And then over here at Bonnie. I mean, this is a good place for some microwave pipes. We have some... We have a pretty good population going here. And Bonnie doesn't really need to be pushing influence anymore, I guess. We're pretty far off of being able to claim anything else. We got the asteroid field. So maybe we want to refocus Bonnie a little bit. Like, it's also true here that this isn't really a significant amount of extra resources. And maybe we'd be better, uh, better served building other stuff here. We're at 413 industry. So, ships would come out quickly. Not super quickly. So yeah, maybe we want to build quantum damped circuits. Like, let's keep upgrading our shipyards. Keep making places where we will build more effective ships. Uh, you guys, I totally forgot, but I was going to issue you a command. I need an attack request. Oh, they are also requesting that uh, I attack here. And apparently, mousing over this, we're getting a tooltip that says one of these ships has the ability to destroy a planet. Yeah, there it was again. So this must be where the thing is. Hey, everybody else, get over here. Murder. That's the murder point. The murder, uh, the murder notification. Everybody get over here and do some murder. Okay, well, that episode got exciting. Now, we have a really serious, dramatic stake in this war. We have to avenge the loss of Acellus. Honestly, they couldn't have made a worse move. Think how angry each and every one of these weird little bird samurai is going to be. Uh, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. We're learning a lot, huh? Uh, come back next time to see how many more lessons the Cravers can teach us before we convert them all into radioactive vapor. And we'll see you then.